Hey guys, this is Anthony and Alec at HP Research, and we are going to be talking about how to do push rods. And this is going to be one of our Bodex BR7 heads. So this will take factory rocker arms. Here you can see we're using some of the Texas Speed Roller Tip, but these are fixed rockers. And everybody always asks, how do I know if I have the right push rod, or how much push rod preload do I need on my lifters? So. And in this case, we're going to assume that you don't know how much travel your lifter has. So we've already marked this guy up, and we kind of know where we're at right now. But first thing, everybody usually wants to know, how do I know where it is? And there's two ways to do this, but the easiest way we're going to look at is we are going to check the intake first. So we're going to wait for the exhaust just to crack open. Alex is going to turn it over here for us. And there's the exhaust just starting to open so we know this guy's on the base circle and I'll show you in just a second exactly why I know that's the case. So we can see we've already pushed these lifters down. So these are new lifters. We just had assembly oil on them so they're easy to operate. If it's been ran, you need to get the oil out but you have to be able to feel where your lifter is in its travel. So I've already mocked these guys up and this is gonna be just like checking solid roller lash and that's about 58 60 thousandths of lash in the system now you want to know why i've got to figure out how it is off the bottom so if we're going to assume 060 that is a 182 rocker arm so we're going to divide it by 1.82 we are just under 33 thousandths off the bottom of that lifter now remember not paying attention to lifter travel this is how far off the bottom it is so could we go a little longer on this push rod yes we could so ideally on most of our engines we set them about 20 thousandths off the bottom and remember this is an aluminum block so it is going to grow that number is going to go up so these are comp evo lifters i believe they're about 90 thousandths travel so we'll have about 65 to 70 thousandths preload to that lifter if you're running a factory lifter 200,000s travel, if you preloaded, 180,000s. So, we're going to go back over here. Now, the next thing we're going to do, since we've already checked our intake, now we've got to go and we're going to check the exhaust. So, we are going to watch this guy open. It's going to come all the way back up. Now the intake just starts. We're in overlap. So, here I wait for this guy just to come almost all the way closed before we can check this guy. So, we're over here. We've got a little bit more room, so I've already measured these guys out before, so I won't go through the same process, but since these rockers are both the same ratio, it's the same deal. You'll measure this, say we've got, we're going to assume here just for sake of argument, say this was 75 thousandths worth of feeler gauges underneath there. So we go back over here and we go 075 divided by our rocker arm ratio of 182. We are 41 thousandths off the bottom, so we could go at least 25 thousandths longer on that push rod and be just fine. Now, everybody brings up the push rod checkers. You cannot do this with a push rod checker. It will bend it under real spring pressure. And unfortunately, guys, this is the hard part. This is how we do it. We have boxes and boxes of push rods, and we check them with real push rods. But rather than buy hundreds or thousands of dollars for the push rods, Buy a push rod checker, get yourself close, then you can kind of go from there on what you need. Buy a size up, size down before you go buy a whole set, and you can accurately figure this out. But remember, whatever it is, if we're dealing with an LS1 or LS6, say we had 50 thousandths, divide it by the rocker ratio, and we are 30 thousandths off the bottom. Probably couldn't get by with getting a 25 thousandths longer push rod. That'd be a little bit too tight. Now, everybody wanted to know why I did what I did on the other ones. So there's two ways to do it. You can go full open on the valve, rotate the engine one turn, that puts it on the base circle. But if you do the exhaust crack, intake almost closed, and we were working on cylinder number one, so we have cylinder one intake, cylinder one exhaust. So focus on these two lobes, guys. So if we start, you know, if we're dealing with a V, you know, your lifter's about here. So as the exhaust just starts to crack here, take a look at where the intake lobe is. It's on the other side. So if our lifter was here, 
he's facing down. So the intake is all the way on the base circle. Our exhaust has just started to crack. Now, if you want to go the other way when we're going to check our intake, I remember, or sorry, you're going to check your exhaust. We've got to wait for this guy to almost close. I'll show you why. So again, these two lobes, here's our exhaust. Here's all the way down. Now look, our intake is just starting to open. Our intake's at peak, peak lift, and then it's going to just almost be closed. Here's our exhaust on number one. Look where the lobe is. 180 degrees off. We know we're on the base circle. So regardless of the cam, whether it's got a lot of overlap or a little bit of overlap, Exhaust just starts to crack open. Intake is on the base. As the intake comes all the way open, almost all the way closed, exhaust is on the base circle. Hopefully that helps everybody. Again, make sure that you've got your engine you know, to where you can check these guys. So your lifters are collapsed. You can operate them by hand. Feeler gauges, calculator, it's an easy way to check. And that's how we do our push rods. Thanks, guys.